Welcome to the Garage Series from New Orleans. My name is Jeremy Chapman, aka Mr. Quick to Run Office Deployment Guy, and I'm joined by Richard Zaraga. I'm a technology architect from Dallas. Right, so we are here to talk about apps for Office and SharePoint. So, Richard, why are we changing the extensibility model for Office and SharePoint? Well, we found that in the past that Office add ins and SharePoint features and, and customizations had a really deep hook into those applications. And right. so, what we wanted to do was find a way to make these very lightweight and yeah. make it so that instead of having to have very specialized skill to develop these, we can cater to the millions of web developers out there in the world. Right, and there are less and less guys out there doing the kind of native add-ins and all the stuff for Office to make it you know, go beyond, above and beyond what it can do natively. That's right, and so what we're doing is we're going to deliver all these customizations now just using web technologies, web technologies like HTML5 and JavaScript. And what we can do actually is basically take kind of an iframe have it react and talk to the data inside the document, whether it's pulling content from the document or editing and basically working the content that's in the document itself. We can do things with that using that iframe, using that kind of portal to the web or to an on-premises service in order to modify what's in the doc. That's right, and what that allows us to do is it's not only going to work in the Office client, but it's going to work in the web applications like OA or Excel services. Right, so we should probably take a look at that. Before we get started, though, let's do today's trivia question. What developer platforms can be used in the new app model for Office and SharePoint? Is it A, ASP.NET, B, Ruby on Rails, C, PHP, or D, all of the above? Anybody have an idea? Not anyone, because they're not all developers. I know. That's why it is. We're going to switch them over by the end. All right. <laughs> Okay, so apps for Office. We have kind of two flavors here. We've got the apps for Office and the kind of end user apps themselves, and in the browser-based OA app. That's so right. how does that stuff all work? Basically, there's a couple of ways we can deliver the apps for Office inside of our full client. So we have our Task Pane app, which basically nests an iframe on the side of our, in this case, our Word document, or it could be Excel or PowerPoint, Word. PowerPoint, Word, left or right side of the, of the pane in some cases. Right. Basically, what this does here, and, and we've selected the word powerful, we've got an application here that's looking into the web through a web service for Merriam-Webster, and it will actually define the word powerful just in case you don't know what that means. That's right. And we can do other stuff, too, like Avery's got a label app that will actually modify the look and feel of the content to actually do label printing, those types we of pull things. Pull all those templates right in. And we can do stuff like, say, for example, we want to inject content into our Word document. Let's say we've got a news item that we want to search for and actually have that news item populate inside the doc itself and attribute where it's from. We can actually do stuff like that with, say, a big news or some type of other apps where we've actually pulled content from the web and added it into our file itself. That's right. So then beyond just the Task Pane app, and that's really Task Pane is indicating kind of where that resides, we have content apps. And that's exclusive to Excel, where basically we're taking our application and we can float that anywhere inside the spreadsheet. You'll notice that. On the corner of here, we've got actually some data that's highlighted. Now that data is being called, and we can dynamically either call from the data. In this case, we're actually determining the sizes of the bubbles so we can get relative proportions of you know, what's on AdventureWorks, uh, Litware, Contoso. I think it's the bubble size and the bubble is the color. color. And that way we can tell what color it should be and the size it should be. So we're basically calling in through what, HTML5 and maybe a little Java manifest to kind of do this? That's right. We actually have something that called the Web Extensibility Framework, which allows us to, even though this is a little browser control, we can interact between the two in both ways and actually bind to this table in Excel. And we're going to show a lot better demonstration of this actually in action where we talk to, say, 
addresses and we can map out where things are in a big long list and be able to actually do things like heat mapping, et cetera, using kind of the web services at the back end and talking to the data that you have in your spreadsheet. So beyond right. that, we also have something that people use a lot, OA, where I'm using that to get my email experience through a browser. And kind of out of the box, we have a couple of great apps, uh, Bing Maps, which will basically use logic inside of your email text. In this case, we actually find an address. We find Peter Street in New Orleans. We see that there's an address there. And based on that information, we can map it out. And if we see a couple of addresses, we can also give you a couple of selections as to what you want to map out. And we also have the ability to do suggest suggested meetings, which basically says, hey, let's meet up at noon tomorrow. It will actually propose a meeting for noon tomorrow with you and the other recipients on the mail and actually generate that file for you. So you kind of have an ICS file already generated right out of the logic of what's in that text. That's right. You could actually have 50 mail apps installed. And ultimately, there's a bunch of rules that run every time you select a new item in Outlook. And then based on those rules, we'll display the different apps that are available yeah. to Outlook. And one on of my that. favorite ones is the Action Items app, where basically you might have a test, the text of email. I know a lot of people write novellas when they write emails with just a bunch of blah, 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 blah. I'm in marketing sometimes. And I get a bunch of superfluous text. And there's like one thing, can you schedule a meeting, Jeremy, after like three page folds of text. I can skip past all of the blah, blah, get right to that one item and see exactly I need to schedule a meeting. And they might have actually put in the meeting time when they want to meet and the address as to where they want to meet. And then it'll fire up the other app. So it really lets me skip past all of the superfluous information. That's right. So beyond this, we can also do things inside of SharePoint, right? Absolutely. So we have a whole set of apps for SharePoint as well that we can use. So first of all, we have a full page app. So if you look at this, it looks still like SharePoint. I have like the Chrome of SharePoint. But this is actually completely outside of SharePoint. We're just being able to hook in and pull information like maybe profile pictures, titles, things like that. So this is the full screen app. We also have what we're calling an app part. So you can think of an app part as a kind of a glorified page viewer web part. This is an iframe that's reaching out in our app, and we're able to display that in our page. But we can pass some really neat contextual information between SharePoint and the app part itself. Right. And then the last thing that we have is we can do custom actions. So you can see here I have this little upload to media services in my media library. Well, okay. That's not something that's out of the box. We delivered that through an app. So I right. can click on this, maybe launch a dialogue that's also part of our app to be able to do some neat things. Right, so all this is pretty cool stuff that we can get to work both in our Office client apps on the you know, browser version of OA as well as the thick clients. But I want to see some of this actually in action, how you build it and some other custom things. How do you actually get all this stuff working? Do you have a demonstration Let's for us? Let's check it out. All right, awesome. So let me get. There we go. All right, so you know, probably the best place to start is where most people start their day, and that's in Outlook. So what I'm going to do is jump over to Outlook here. Uh, I happen to be in town with my boss. My boss is here, Nola, with us, and he's kind of a foodie. And what you can see here is an email he sent me about meeting up and getting some good New Orleans food. Right. So you can see here in the email, based upon what's in the message, or maybe the subject, or maybe who sent it, we have a, all these different rules that are running behind the scenes that are saying, here are the mail apps that are relevant to that message. So you can see here that I have a Bing Maps app and a suggested meeting app. If I click on Bing Maps, what you'll see is it highlights the address, and then it's going to go and pull up that address in Bing Maps right here. Uh, one of the best ways I've heard mail apps described is anytime you're going to go and copy and paste any sort of text out of an email, that is a perfect candidate for a mail app. Especially you think about all the people that would go into Bing Maps and actually find the directions and then find the mapping of the location, then copy and paste it, maybe use the snipping tool. This is something that does this right out of the box, right? Absolutely. The other thing is, based upon Exchange has some things where we call known types. It knows about when someone is suggesting a meeting. I have suggested meetings here. So if I click on that, you can see it based upon want to meet up for lunch around noon on Thursday, it knows that someone is suggesting that we meet up. And, and I can go and, with one click, maybe suggest, uh, create a meeting out of this. Right. Now, one of the cool things are, remember, this is all web technology. This is a little browser control within Outlook. Because of that, these apps not only work here in, in Outlook, but if I were to come bring up a browser, 
They also work directly in OWA, so I can do the exact same apps inside Outlook Web Access. Very cool. So I tell you what, my boss, he's a, he's a foodie. I want to make sure that I take him to get some good food here in New Orleans. Right. So what I'm going to do is find some great food that I can take him out to eat with. Sounds good. So we have my whole team here, and we've been constantly going and updating different social feeds like Yammer and our SharePoint news feeds with different places that we've eat it, eaten. And, and I'm going to actually use that as a way to find where I take my boss to eat. OK, let's see it. Now, it might be information overload. We have a big team. So what I want to do is I want to actually aggregate that and maybe put some cinnamon on top of it. Now, do you think SharePoint does that out of the box? Some of it. Well, but not the cinnamon part. So let's do it with an app. All right. So I'm going to come over here, and I have a sentiment, a social sentiment app, just a really quick SharePoint app that I put together. And what I'm going to be able to do is use different hashtags like you'd see on Twitter or Facebook or you know, all these different areas sure. and be able to go and, and see what people think about those. So let's search for maybe shrimp. Add that guy in here. Maybe, uh, let's see, maybe add a little bit of uh, oysters. Wow. Jambalaya. Add a few more of these. We'll do my favorite, which is beignets. And can't do New Orleans without some crawfish. Right. So before we could have probably looked through some meta, meta tags as to what people are, say, ask me about whatever subject, but this will actually give them social sentiment as to what they're actually talking about from a social perspective. That's right. So the, we can augment the experience of SharePoint and Office. This happens to be Office 365. So I'm in the cloud doing these things. And I can go and I can augment and I can see that, you know, looks like shrimp is kind of positive. And as right. I go across, there's beignets. It's way up in the lead at 7.13. So I think Very that's cool. what I'm going to do. Let's do some beignets with my boss. Love it. Let's do it. All right. So now let's find a place to go eat beignets. Does anyone know where I would get beignets? I, I I'm have no a big, clue. I'm a big fan of the French Market and Cafe du Monde. OK. Well, let's see how that fares. What I, what I did is I put together another app. This is a task pane app for Excel that's going to allow us to go and maybe search Yelp and pull raw Yelp data into Excel. And so that's what I'm okay. going to do here. I'm going to run this guy. I happen to be in Visual Studio here. Um, Task Paint app is something that sits alongside of a document, and it helps with the document. It's not really a part of the document. It helps with the document. So as I go here, I might go and say, let's look for beignets. And hopefully it cached my location because it's unable. My browser's not able to find it. There we go. Fantastic. So we got a bunch of different restaurants here. And what I now can do, you might say, well, that wasn't really interacting with Excel. You just have a little like control over to the side. Well, if I click on import raw data, now I've brought all that data into Excel and I can work with it. So actually writing to Excel, or conversely, we can read from Excel in some cases if we want to do that as well. Absolutely. I can go both ways. I can bind to areas. It's, it's right. fantastic. So I can maybe now bring another app into play. Maybe let's map these out. We saw in the mail app where my boss is staying. Yeah. So I might say, you know, let me go and insert another app. I have another Bing Maps app that's used for Excel, where when I use this app, I can actually use it to map maybe a latitude and longitude. So I can go get this area and bind to that and quickly go and find those different locations around the city. OK, I recognize some of those locations. Yep. So pretty cool. And guess what? All of this. I can go take this exact item and I can go put it in a browser. It works in Excel services as well. It's HTML technology. So this is all really hard to build? It's actually quite easy to build. You want me to show you that? Yes, please. So one of the things we did is not only are we catering to the massive web developers out there, we want the point of entry, the cost of entry to be down. And so I actually can develop all these just directly in a browser. Very cool. So, let's, so you can use an app to develop apps. I can use an app to develop apps. Let's okay. look at that. So, I'm going to go out here. This is a, a quick little developer tenant. And what I want to do is there's a special app for building apps called Napa. So all of you can go to dev.office.com, and you can go and get Napa. Um, here it is. Build an app. And if I click on this, it's going to be an entire in-browser IDE. So I can do all my development in the browser here. I get IntelliSense. I can go and run it all directly from here in the browser. And we're basically outputting HTML code and JavaScript. Right? That's right. Uh, everything that I develop in here, it's, it's all client-side technologies. I could do server-side, but in that case, I'd need something like Visual Studio. But guess right. what? When I create one of these, so I'll just do an app for SharePoint, um, 
I'm going to have that in-browser experience, but if I wanted to and take it further, I can go and I could export this out to Visual Studio. So you can see I have an option here to do Visual Studio with this. Now, let's fast forward and say that I wanted to build something like maybe something like Urban Spoon where I could go and just randomly select one of those restaurants. So that's what I put together here. Let's take a look at that. Right, like rolling the dice as to which one you want to go there to. There you go. It's, it's totally random. Um, what you'll see here is in my SharePoint site, I've uploaded my Excel document. So I'm going to see all those restaurants that I found using my Excel app. Okay. But I'm also put another app on top of that, which is a SharePoint app. So this here in a second, it's going to load this wheel with the data from Excel. So Excel is a, uh, exposed through a, a set of REST services of its own. So it's kind of like gambling for beignets. I am gambling for beignets. It's awesome. <laughs> yes. So let's do it. Let's see where we're going to take the boss. Spin the wheel. Come on, Cafe Du Monde. We were pretty close yesterday. We were close yesterday. Oh, it's slowing down. That was kind of a big spin. It's the strength. Yes. Royal House. Royal all House. right, so that's it was, it was Domenica yesterday, Royal House today. That was close. I guess we can try. If we can keep going all week, we'll eventually hit Cafe Du Monde. I know. So <laughs> there right. you have it. Super easy to build. I can do it in a browser, and all the web developers of the world can rejoice. Awesome stuff. So with that, uh, you know, we've shown basically all the different web app types, or the different apps for Office types, apps for SharePoint, how they're built, how you'd basically get that to interact with your data. We had a trivia question, though. What developer platforms can be used in the new app model for Office and SharePoint? Is it A, ASP.NET, B, Ruby on Rails, C, PHP, or D, all of the above? Anybody have an answer? Actually, Jeremy, I want to expand on that. What's cool sure. is anything that renders HTML5. So I could use PHP, I could use JSP, I could use any web technology, Ruby on Rails. This isn't just a .NET thing, although cool. we'd like you to use .NET. Um, you can use really anything you you're comfortable with. Could you use a notepad with. to do it? Use notepad, sure. Awesome, so all that stuff will work to develop these apps for Office. So we've covered a lot in terms of all the different app types. We covered basically what they look like running, how you build them, different, different technologies you can use to actually create apps for Office. And really, the sky's the limit as to what data you might be calling. So I'm, I'm uh, blogging all the time at Microsoft.com slash garage. Where do you blog, typically? I'm on MSDN. Just search for Richard Apps for SharePoint. You'll find me. And do you actually post any of these apps out so people can download them? Everything I do gets posted. So Awesome. So you can actually use some of these apps yourself. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. And we will see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.